Last time, we asked what the first ever beer was, and when it might have been made. Now, to that end, we had to use archaeology to figure all this out. Our journey into the history of beer had begun. We traced beer's earliest ancestor through the ages and covered all of the discoveries that we've made about it. Now, last time we were concerned with a period of time we called the Neolithic, but today we're going to leave it behind for the new age in town, the Bronze Age. The last beer we talked about was the find of some Chinese booze from round about 7000 BCE, which up until we discovered the Natufian site, we thought was the oldest example. This, of course, was all before written records, but eventually us humans started to settle down, and when we did, we started to develop what we now know as civilization. We all began to congregate and created something new. Cities. We started being able to innovate and have people that specialised in a particular task, and began making tools out of bronze, hence the name. Eventually, we realised that just remembering stuff wasn't ideal. How many sheep have I got? What day is it? How can I prove that I bought all this stuff? How many pints have I had today? Eventually, we began to use things to record all this stuff, and soon we would create something special. Writing. Up until this point, to keep track of things like how many goats you've got, we used to use tokens and things like that. Practical as this was, we soon realised the potential of being able to record stuff that up until this point had been passed down for generations through oral traditions, such as religious rituals, or Grand's bread recipe, or the best way to make a sword. This of course helped us to recreate some more complicated processes, which of course includes how to make beer. Humanity was now more complex, and we needed something that would help us to record things in much more detail than a token or a pictograph could convey. We began developing writing in various forms from hieroglyphs to cuneiform. Some of these naturally depict people drinking socially or presenting offerings of drinks to the gods. Of course, the most famous bit of beery writing from these early civilizations comes to us in the form of the hymn to Ninkazi, who I mentioned in my very first episode on this channel, and she was important enough to mention in the episode I did for Mythology Guy last year. Ninkazi was a Sumerian goddess, and more specifically, the goddess of beer. The hymn written to her is part prayer, part recipe, and is currently the earliest known recipe for beer that we have. From the hymn, we know that the beer that they made was not that dissimilar to the porridgey slop that we'd been making for centuries, and it was served in a bowl rather than a cup. It wasn't really drinkable without the use of a straw either. The hymn also points to something else. Beer, and its counterpart, bread, was the domain of women. Ninkazi was a goddess, because making beer in Sumerian culture was associated with the lady of the household, especially since the Sumerians invented barmaids as well. So next time you see a landlady or a pub, or a lass drinking a lager with a straw, they're merely continuing a tradition that's been going on for about 6,000 years. Beer also makes it into the first ever recorded piece of written literature, detailing the adventures of Gilgamesh, in the appropriately named Epic of Gilgamesh. In this tale, Enkidu, the beast man turned civil gent, is recorded as having a few beers that made him happy. Evidently, Sumerians loved a drop of beer, as we also got an old drinking song of theirs preserved on a tablet for centuries. Sumeria wasn't the only place getting in on all the boozy action, though. Not too far away, the ancient Egyptians at the same time were evidently drinking wine, alongside with their contemporaries, the Minoans, over in what we now call Crete. Now, if you talk about ancient Egypt, then you have to talk about the fact that beer was a massive part of Egyptian life. It was one of the things an Egyptian would consume every single day. It didn't matter if you were rich or if you were poor, you were going to have some. It was very easy to figure out why the ancient Egyptians thought it was an important drink to have regularly. Beer is full of nutrients, and it was held in such high regard in ancient Egyptian culture it was actually used as currency and as medicine. For reference, here's a picture of an Egyptian mercenary getting paid in booze. The labourers that built the Great Pyramids had an allocation of beer, which was their payment for lugging big rocks around all day. Like with Sumeria, the Egyptians got a god of beer, called Hathor, but she wasn't the only one. Lots of gods got involved with beer, including Osiris. 
These are the two big examples of beers that were being made at the dawn of civilization and were being written about. But surely it wasn't just these guys making booze? No, of course not. So what was going on elsewhere? Well, at this point we do have to abandon written records and look at archaeology again. Beer had not changed much at all since we first started making it, but us humans were still thinking up new ways to make booze. As I mentioned, the contemporaries of both the Sumerians and the Egyptians, the Minoans, who lived in Crete, were drinking wine, and over in China, they kind of had enough of beer, and they'd also moved over to wine, but specifically, rice wine. Over in South America, there is evidence of civilization at this time creating places to feast, which of course means drinking. These beers would be a lot different to what we know of since they used either maize or some form of plant or sap from a tree to create their brews. And it was a very similar picture in the northern part of America as well. A lot of the origins of these beverages are now lost to the mists of time, unfortunately, but this is where oral traditions will save the day. A lot of these drinks are still made today because the recipe has been passed down through the generations. Unfortunately, we can't really tell when these drinks were invented because you can't really carbon date a story. And certainly, in the case of the Mesoamericans, the civilization that was around at this time didn't really exactly have a writing system quite like everyone else. And, oddly enough, they developed differently. They didn't have pottery to store or drink their beer from. But thankfully, we can still try and seek out their modern descendants. Skipping back over the pond, we're heading to the Indus Valley and the Indus Valley civilization, who were also a contemporary of the Egyptians and the Sumerians. And it's known that they too had been making a kind of booze and, fun fact, are likely candidates for being the first to come up with the idea of distillation. Although it would be a very, very, very long time before we got anything that remotely looked like whiskey or vodka. But the drink they made was again associated with gods and was held in high regard. At this point, beer was now fully rooted into the human experience, and once we settled down to make civilization, it came with us, much like other things like our rituals and our gods. Beer had not really changed that much, but now that we'd sat down and settled down, we had more time to think about stuff and ask questions such as, how can I make this better? Or, how can I invent an entirely new boozy beverage? Small villages were out, city-states and empires were the new hip trend for humanity, and soon new ones were going to start to pop up, and like these first ones, they were going to write things down, and the story of beer will continue. Join me next time as we see what was to come next in the history of beer. So until next time, grab a drink, become civilised, and keep asking questions. <laughs>